Hey guys, Aviation ABC. Flight surfaces, flight controls today. We're not at home at the table, as you can see. Gonna take a look at the real birds this time, and even gonna go flying later on to show you in the air what's going on. So, without further ado, be sure to smash that like, subscribe, set the bell, let's go. So, guys, here we are in the Archer 3 cockpit Piper. First of all, we gotta separate. There are primary flight controls on an aircraft and secondary flight controls. Primary flight controls exist of the ailerons, the rudder, and the horizontal stabilizer. But how do we actually control it in the air? Well, we've got that yoke. Yokes can look way different than that. That's basically looking a bit like in a Boeing, actually. The basic yoke. In the Boeing, we would have a trim switch here. But then yokes can also look like that, that, or that. But today we are sticking with the Piper one. So pretty much the same like in the Boeing. But how, what surface do we control with that? Well, we control the other ones and the horizontal stabilizer by pushing and pulling. And then down there, we've got the rudder pedals. The rudder pedals... Give me a second. Yeah, I'm gonna give you a second. <laughs> now we can see what you're doing. So, we've got the rudder pedals, the button part. The top part is the brakes. Basically just pushing them in to brake. But we're not gonna talk about that today. So, left pushes the rudder to the left, right pushes the rudder to the right. Gonna see that outside in a second, because we're gonna put more in here, like I said. So. And then we've got secondary flight controls. And a little piper like that one, there are not many. For example, we haven't got spoilers on that aircraft here. It's most likely a thing for airliners or private jets. But we have flaps. And that's that little handbrake, like in a car down here. There we go. There we go. And you just pull it upwards like a handbrake. Pretty simple, pretty easy. And now I would say we go out, so they're gonna put Moritz in here and let him push all the controls and I'm going to show you out that what happens with the controls and uh, around which axis it controls it and then we're going to go up in the air and show, going to show you a bit up in the air flying. Sounds good. Let's go. Here we are, outside of the aircraft now. Moritz in there. We went to the same flight school, by the hey way. Guys. Pilot as well. Flying the 757 in the future. So, anyways. Ailerons, guys. Those are ailerons. Pretty huge, actually. And Moritz is going to pull them now to the left. That will produce a downgoing movement of the aileron, which will bring the, because we want to go left, which will then bring the right wing up. But we got to compensate with the rudder for it. We're going to go now. Because the up go, uh, downgoing wheel would produce a yawing moment in the other direction. We don't want that. That's why we got to, if we fly a turn, we got to put rudder in the same direction, which is called, see? Moritz, you're fantastic. <laughs> left foot. Rudder deflects to the left. Right foot, please. Rudder deflects to the right. And that's how we coordinate turns in the air. But we're going to show you that one up there, because maybe you'll understand it a bit more then. And then we've got, that's basically geared with our primary flight controls. Ailerons, rudder, and of course, no, we forgot one. Pull, push, stabilizer. Up, which means the nose of the aircraft is coming up. And we climb, down, please. Vice versa. Nose goes down and we would descend. That thing here is called the tap, basically, and that's the horizontal stabilizer. Now we're going to come to the secondary flight controls. On huge airliners, we would have um, spoilers as well, and they are most likely fitted on the wing up here to disturb airflow, to slow down when we have to do really fast descents, or um, after landing to disrupt the lift of the wing. Those are the flaps. Can you pull flaps one, Absolutely. please? <laughs> and they basically come down, just pull them all the way down, slow, and they increase the wing camber, which means um, we have more surface, the, wind, the airflow has to go through, and that increases lift, and we can fly at slower speeds, right? Absolutely, totally right. He just says absolutely, totally right. I has no clue. <laughs> <laughs> so, but now I would say, we're going to show you that stuff in the air, and have some fun with it. All right, guys, so we're right here uh, over, where are we right now? Near Schaffburg. Schaffburg. And we're going to show you now, so we have four people in here, it's quite comfy. We're going to show you how a turn would look if we wouldn't use the rudder input. So I'm going to do this turn now, we're going to go up here to show you the nose. And then we've got that instrument here, I don't know if you can see it right now. We, we call that game kick the ball, basically. So. Again, without rudder, if we go to the left here, the ball moves out of the center. 
Normally it should move out of the center, but it doesn't right now. Oh, there it is. And our thing is, with the rudder, we have to keep the ball center. That's basically the thing we have to do to fly coordinated turns in the air. So to fly a turn, you need rudder input and aileron input. We're gonna go 180 now. Now if I'm using too much rudder, the nose drops. And we would start to descend if I would pull. As you can see right now, it should go down any second. Okay, I can't see anything. The sun is pretty, pretty bright right now. So with our turn coordinator, the thing is, basically you gotta kick the ball. If the ball is to the right, you use right rudder to kick the ball back in the middle. And that thing can show you if you're flying a coordinated turn. If I'm going to the left now without rudder again, see the ball moves to the left, but then goes back to the center. But that movement of the left is called adverse yaw, like I said earlier. And if I compensate it directly with rudder, which I'm going to do now, let me just... If I'm compensating that with left rudder now, the ball won't move to the left that much. It stays pretty much in the middle, as soon, and if you turn back out again, you do the same thing with right rudder. And that's that you keep always the nose straight with your flight path, basically. Funny thing as well, you can basically fly the plane without ailerons, just introducing a turn by movement of the feet, so pushing right rudder will accelerate the outer, so the left wing will accelerate a bit faster than the right one, which will produce more lift on the left wing, and that will initiate the turn. So for example, I'm just gonna keep my hands close here because of the height, but if I put right rudder in there now, we're gonna get into to, to a turn to the right because of the left wing accelerating. See, I'm not doing anything, but right now I'm pulling a bit because we we're gonna lose height otherwise. That could bring you in the spin, basically. And we don't want that. So, straight out here again. Did I forget anything, boys? No, just fine. Perfect. Yep. What else could we show them? So, like I said earlier, the flaps increase the wing's camber. And therefore, we have an increase of lift and an increase of drag, which slows down the aircraft, but increases lift. So we can fly at a slower speed without stalling. And we've got the flaps operating speed on our speed bed here. Patrick, can you take control for a second? Yes, I have control. Basically, that's the speed band here. And um, the white band is flaps operating speed. The green is normal operating speed. And then we've got yellow and red. But we talked about that in another video earlier. So Patrick is going to decelerate now. Yeah, so carburetor heat is on and slowing down. And as soon as he sets flaps to one, okay. and then you can feel that the aircraft balloons up because the lift is increased that much and we're not changing anything else except the wing camber basically. Yeah, do flaps one. Yeah. And the aircraft directly wants to climb away a bit which is always why you have to pitch a bit down when you set flaps one or any flap setting because you get that ballooning effect. And as soon as we set the flaps, we can then decelerate further what we're doing for landing, basically, every time. Can we do one more flap setting? Okay. Speed checked. Watch the altitude, if he wouldn't do anything. Nose comes up directly, and now he has to push a bit. Yeah, right. To uh, level off again. We had a pitch change of around 3 degrees right there. So we had to, um, yeah, like I said, push forward to compensate for that more lift. Because we don't want to climb, we want to descend, but decelerate. That's basically flaps, guys. Right. Flaps yes, up yes. again. Adam doing stories back there. Speed yeah. checks, flaps. Now he's accelerating and see, nose drops, flaps coming up. And zero. And we're back to normal. And we need to pull I'm on the yoke to maintain the altitude. Perfect. And that's basically flaps, guys. I would say, now, we're gonna go a bit of sightseeing, right? Yeah, Are we sure. gonna sightseeing now? Yeah, That's absolutely. Good. Gonna capture some cool reels, shorts, whatever, and um, I'm gonna see you guys back on the ground. Guys, we're done. We landed safe and sound, thanks to Patrick. By the way, thank you, Patrick. Yeah. <laughs> Moritz right there. Uh, we're gonna go home now. I hope you enjoyed today's video about flaps. Flaps. Fly controls and surfaces. If we miss something, let us know down below in the comments. And with that said, see you guys next time with E. Have a great night. See ya.